I don't know if you realize it or not. This is the beginning of week seven. Now remember, at the beginning, this was an eight-week course. That means you're almost done. It's the first of October and the first of the second to the last week of the class. So you can see the finish line in the not too far off distance, right? Um, this week, two really good topics, delivery and language. Delivery is all those elements we use to get the words across. So gestures, voice inflection, pitch, volume, tone, all of those things we call them vocalics, um, how you use your visual aids, things you emphasize. There's a ton of things that are tied up in delivery and delivery can make or break a speech. I have seen people give Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream, which is probably the most well-known and probably best speech. Um, I've seen them give it with a super lackluster delivery. In fact, there was a, um, a college that did a series of poor delivery techniques as applied to Martin Luther King's speech. And you watch them and it's just, oh, it's so bad. And I may put one or two of those up this week sometime during the week on the login page. But they killed the speech. And, and I have a dream, if you just read it, it's poetry. When you watch King deliver it, and you will, um, you see that the, the brilliance in the delivery of that speech. At the same time, I have seen speakers deliver what seems to be an amazing speech, in reality, it said nothing at all, but the delivery elements were so good. Uh, you'll see one, it's on the login page. It's a TED Talk, watch it. The delivery is absolutely brilliant and it's usually in my face-to-face -face classes, my students like it the best. And there's really nothing to that, the content portion of that speech, but it is so brilliantly delivered that people are just amazed by it. So delivery can be a critical element. That's why you go back and watch yourself and analyze how you did on your speech so that you improve your delivery. So we're going to look at delivery skills. We're also going to look at language. Language is obviously a huge part of speaking, right? Because if we don't have language, we don't have public speaking. But so much is spent on picking out the right words and what words mean. And we're in... For English, English is a language that there are many words for the same thing, right? And sometimes those words have different connotations to them. We might say someone is thrifty and it sounds like, you know, they're really good at, at spending their money and getting the most out of their money and blah, blah, blah. And other per people might describe that very same person not as thrifty, but as cheap. And the connotation goes from somewhat positive to somewhat negative just by word selection. And you'll see a lot of examples of that as going forward. Um, language is critical. A lot of times, you know, there are entire industries, marketing and um, advertising, spend billions and billions of dollars every year finding just the right word to convey what they want to convey or to steer the audience one way or another. And I'll put some videos up and some quick tips about language as well. Language could be a whole class by itself, um, and in some places it is. I have a book from a um, another college professor in communication that he actually he wrote two books about language, and it's just amazing the things that we can do with language, and particularly when you look at persuasion, um, sometimes one particular word will sway an audience, where another word that sort of means the same thing has no effect on them at all. Um, for years and years and years, gambling was considered a vice and it was a horrible thing, you know, and, and when you thought of gambling, it was one of the four things most religions frown upon smoking, drinking, dancing, and, and, um, gambling, right? And somebody went through the brilliant idea of let's change the concept of gambling and start calling it gaming. And we all grow up playing games. So gaming has this fun sound to it. And it doesn't sound like a vice. And now you see commercials all the time about gaming. 
and all it is is a repackaged version of gambling. We changed the names and suddenly it made it more acceptable. Um, that happens all the time. So word selection is critical, especially when we're talking about persuasion. So we're going to look at language. We're going to look at delivery. Again, they're two huge topics that could take up a week or two by themselves. Language could easily be a whole class by itself, not like English, French, Spanish language, but studying the word selection. And in marketing, it is being done that way. You're also, as far as assignments going, you're going to give your persuasive speech this week. You're going to evaluate your sales pitch mini speech and also peer review each other's sales pitch mini speech. I haven't started grading those yet because it's it's Wednesday morning and the week is just now started. So I, I typically don't grade anything until it's past the due date. Um, I'm really looking forward to sales pitch mini speeches. Those are usually my favorite ones because the creativity comes out and you get to see because you get to make up your own product if you want to and you can. You know, as long as you follow Monroe's Motivated Sequence, you could be, you could have a lot of fun with it. And I've seen some brilliant ones. In fact, the one you saw last week on the login page, um, Regan's one about the nook and the book. Um, I absolutely loved that when she did it. And I, I said to her, I want this, use this as an example because it's a magnificent speech. Those are some of my favorite ones is watching speeches like that. So you'll do a peer review and a self-evaluation of that. You're going to have a language assignment. You're actually going to watch King's I Have a Dream speech. And since we're talking about language this week, you're going to identify. There are certain elements of language that are talked about in the text. You're going to identify them in King's speech. He uses all of them. And then you're going to turn around and apply them to examples for your persuasive speech. They don't have to be in your persuasive speech but it at least shows that you can think about how to utilize these language ideas in your own topic. Um, you'll also do an analysis of a persuasive speech. It's called putting the brakes on teenage driving. And like the other analyzing speeches, you're just breaking it down. You're trying to get the elements that make that a really good or bad persuasive speech and to see how well they did. It's just another example of learning how to do peer review self evaluations and also seeing how other people build persuasive ideas and persuasive speeches to help you with your own. And then of course there's the delivery and the language quiz. Um, I do want to point out a couple of things. The persuasive speech that you're going to turn in is the biggest point value assignment of the course. It's 200 points. Um, that's a fifth of your grade and you want to pay very close attention to the grading rubric and I've said this over and over through the course but you really want to look at all of the elements in the rubric and don't assume you understand what is or is not needed there because typically um, students will miss some of these and they get massive point reductions and then They'll say, well, I, I didn't know that was in there. You didn't look at the rubric. You've got to look at those rubrics. I'll give you an example. Last week, I just got done grading all of the informative speeches. It took me a while to do them. And I had a number of students who only turned in one outline. They didn't turn in both. And the rubric very clearly says, here's the elements for the preparation outline, and there were four of them. And here's the element for the speaking outline. There was only one of those. And I had people turn in one outline. So automatically, the elements for the other outline go to zero for points, right? In the persuasive speech, I can't remember exactly. There's four or five elements for the per, uh, preparation outline. There's two or three elements for the speaking outline. You did those audience analysis surveys a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully you've all filled out everybody's survey. Um, you are going to want to do look at the rubric because there's supposed to be an analysis in there. There's supposed to be a discussion of what you found out about your audience from the answers you got in those surveys and then how you utilize that to craft your speech specifically for that audience. Um, visual aids, I actually, the assignment instructions for the informative speech said a visual aid is required. I had students who did not use a visual aid and it was two elements, so that's 10 points right away that you don't get. Pay attention to all of those elements in the rubric. I cannot stress this enough because I had so many students get a low grade 
and it was simply not looking at the rubric ahead of time and seeing whether or not they have covered everything that's required for the speech. And the rubric's right there to tell you. If you've got everything in that rubric, you're probably going to get a pretty good grade. I mean, it, it, it's that simple. Um, that's all I've got. I will put up a lot of quick tips and, and some other videos for you to watch, both for language and for delivery, because there's a lot of really interesting, curious things out there. Some of them are really fascinating, me, especially when you look at language. Um, otherwise, shoot me an email if you've got questions or get a hold of me during office hours, and I'll talk to you later.